wonderful land. You can tell it's going to be delicious. Can't you smell it already? Mmm, how I love that gorgeous smell. You've all heard of Cadbury? Yes. yes. Roundtree? Yes. yes. Fry? Yes. yes. Nestle? Yes. And Wonka? No. What's that? You say, what's Wonka? Why, Wonka chocolate, of course. I do admit that Mr. Willy Wonka's chocolate is fairly new, but it's also the best chocolate in the whole world. Why, Willy Wonka himself is the most amazing, the most fantastic, and the most extraordinary chocolate maker the world has ever seen. Why, he's invented things such as, say, I'm not going to tell you what he's invented, you all came to see for yourselves, so I'll let you do just that. But before I do, perhaps I shall fill you in on what's been happening around here lately. Three chocolate makers known as Mr. Fickle Groover, Mr. Grodno, <coughs> and Mr. Slugworth sent spies to work for Mr. Wonka in order to steal all his secrets. Why, they must have been good spies. Because soon after, these three chocolate makers began making such delicious Wonka favourites, such as ice cream that never melts, chewy gum that never loses its flavour, and candy balloons that you can blow to huge sizes before you pop them with a pin and gobble them up. Mr Wonka, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know who these spies were. And if he continued to operate his factory, all his secrets would be stolen. So he did the only thing he could. He sent all the workers home and closed the factory. You might think that would be the end of Mr. Wonka, but no sorry, not him. After months and months went by, the factory suddenly began operating again, but nobody knew who was running the place. Nobody ever went in, and nobody ever came out. The only thing that people could see were shadows dancing around in front of lighted windows. Mighty strange. Well, anyway, to get back to the story, Soon after, there was an article in the town paper saying that Mr. Willy Wonka, in order to sell lots of chocolates once again, was running a contest. Yes, sir, that's right, a contest. A golden ticket had been hidden in ordinary candy bars in five ordinary wrapping papers. These tickets were said to be found anywhere, in any shop, in any street, in any town, in any country in the world, upon any counter where Wonka's candies are sold. The five lucky winners will be able to talk Mr. Wonka's brand new factory and take home enough chocolate for the rest of their lives. Now that, my friends, is where our story begins. Four of the tickets have already been found. Oh, by the way, would you like to meet the four lucky people? Yes. yes! Listen and watch carefully. I think they might be here somewhere. Let's see. Augustus! Augustus Blue! Oh, I'm here! Chocolate! Chocolate! I love chocolate! Food! Food! I must eat all of the time! This golden ticket is my golden ticket! To eat! And eat and eat! Chocolate! Chocolate! Now that her friends was our first golden ticket finder, Augustus Blue. Now let's see if the lucky girl who found our second golden ticket is here. Oh, Violet! Violet Beauregard! I am here! I'm a gumshoe normally, but when I heard about 
of these ticket things with Mr. Walton. I led up to them and switched to candy bars in the hope of striking as lucky. Now, of course, I'm right back on gum. I simply adore gum. I can't do without it. I munch it all day long, except for a few minutes at mealtimes when I take it out and stick it behind my ear for safekeeping. To tell you the honest truth, I simply wouldn't feel comfortable if I didn't have that little wedge of gum to chew on every moment of the day. Oh, my mother says that it's not ladylike and it looks ugly to see girls' jaws going up and down like mine do all the time. But I don't agree, and who is she to criticize anyway? Because, if you ask me, I'd say that her jaws are going up and down almost as much as mine are just from yelling at me every minute of the day. And now, it may interest you to know that this piece of gum I'm chewing right at this moment is one I've been working on for over three months solid. That's a record, that is. It's a record beaten by the one held by my best friend, Miss Cornelia Prince Metal. And was she ever mad? It's my most prized possession now. This piece of gum is at night. I just stick it on the end of the bedpost, and it's as good as ever in the morning. A bit hard at first, maybe. What a, a lucky girl. Now, our third golden ticket was found by another lucky girl. Her name is Veruca Salt. Veruca, are you here now, Veruca? I'm here. Where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket! Oh, yes. Here it is. As soon as I told my father, I simply had to have one of those golden tickets. He went into the store and started buying up all the wonky candy bars he could lay his hands on. Thousands of them he must have bought. Hundreds of thousands. Then, he had them loaded onto trucks and sent directly to his own factory. He's in the peanut business, you see, and he's got about a hundred women working for him over at his joint, selling peanuts for roasting and salting those women do all day long. They just sit there shelling peanuts. So he says to them, okay girls, from now on you can stop shelling peanuts start shelling the wrappers of these crazy candy bars and they did full speed ahead from morning till night. But three days went by and we had no luck. Oh, it was terrible. I got more and more upset each day and every time he came home I would scream at him, where's my golden ticket? I Let me introduce them to you. 
This is the home of Charlie Falcon. Seven people live here, and there are only two rooms and one bed, so you can see that life is extremely uncomfortable. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Falcon. Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. And these two very old people are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. The bed was given to the four old people because they are so old and so tired. And of course, they're all over 90 years old. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. They and little Charlie Bucket sleep in the other room upon mattresses on the floor. As you know, it can be very cold in the winter time. They can't buy a better house because they don't have any money and there aren't any better jobs. And well, Mr. Bucket is the only one that can work and he lost his job a few weeks ago. Yes, it's very sad, but you see, the toothpaste factory just had to close down without Mr. Walker selling any chocolate. Nobody ever bought any or ate any, so they didn't get any cavities and they didn't buy any toothpaste. And well, you know how it goes. Oh gee, I almost forgot. This is the hero, Charlie Pocket. Charlie's a nice boy, but he's been starving lately. In fact, the whole family has. But I'm worried about Charlie though. Did you know that Charlie walks to school instead of running like the other kids in order to save his energy? Yes, it's very sad. Or oh, I've said far too much already. Let's take a look at what's happening in the bucket home. I'll see you later. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
scrumptious fudge fell a delight. Since it was, well, my 50 cents, and I was just so hungry for one. Go on, yes, Charlie, yes, go on. on. So, I took off the wrapper slowly, and... Charlie, yes, you yes, 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 got yes, yes, to take it back. Oh, no, 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 no. I ate the chocolate. Oh, and it was delicious. But then I realized that I still had 40 cents left, and, well, you know how much I love chocolate. Oh, Charlie, you're not <coughs> sick of You didn't spend all that money. Oh, on. no, no, not all the money on chocolate. In fact, I only bought one more one with the scrumptious fudge mellow delight. And I found a fifth dollar ticket! You what? what? And you 
must be Mrs. Salt. Don't shake his hand, Mummy. It's probably all sticky and chocolate juice from working in the factory. He does own the run a silly little factory anyway. You're mighty me. Enchanted to meet you. Yes, enchanted. Come on, I'm missing all my favorite TV shows. And I miss TV. Pleased to meet you. Overjoyed. Overjoyed. And you must be the young man who found the ticket only yesterday. You're Charlie Bucket, aren't you? Yes, sir. Thank you. And this, sir, is my grandpa Charlie. Howdy, Mr. Walcott. I'm really pleased to meet you. How do you do, Mr. Grandpa Cho? How do you do? <laughs> right now. Is that everyone? Yes. I guess it is. Go on. You'll all follow me, please. Our tour is about to begin. And do stick together. Please don't wander off by yourselves. I shouldn't like to lose any of you at this stage of the proceedings. Hear me now. Right, off we go then. You'll notice it's quite warm inside the factory. I have to be warm on account of my workers. My workers are used to extremely hot climate. They can't stand the cold. Why, they'd perish if they went outside in this weather. Why, they'd freeze to death. Yes, Augustus. Ah, oh, all in good time, my dear boy. Be patient. You shall see everything as we go along. Now, provided I'm not lost, I believe it's this way. Oh, I'm tired. This seems like we've been turning left. I think I heard Mr. Wonka say all his most important rooms are deep below the surface. Well, I wonder why. Well, I heard him say that all the rooms that we're going to visit are enormous. Some are supposed to be bigger than football fields. Yes, here we are, everyone. This is the chocolate room. It's the nerve center of the whole factory. Why, it's the heart of my whole operation. There's nothing in here. What the Wings 
ten of balloopers for breakfast. And come galloping back for a second helping. <laughs> oh, when I went out there, I found the little Oompa Loompas living in tree houses. They had to live in tree houses, you see, to escape from the Wangoos, and the Hornswogglers, and the Snowswangers. When I found them, they were practically starving to death. They were eating green caterpillars. Oh. Red beetles. Oh. Eucalyptus leaves. Oh. And if you can stomach it, the bark of the bonbon tree. Oh. But they loved cocoa beans as well. They only found about one or two a year. They would talk about cocoa beans all day. And I dare say they dreamt about them all night. And it just so happens, the cocoa bean is a thing from which all chocolate is made. And I myself use billions of them every week in this factory. So, I spoke to the leader of the tribe, in Umpalunch. And I told him that he and his people could have all the cocoa beans they wanted. They would just come here, work for me, and live in my factory. Well, the leader of the tribe was so happy, he leapt into the air, and he tossed his bowl of mashed caterpillars right out of the treehouse window. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and so here they are. My, they're all wonderful workers. They all speak English now, and they love their singing and dancing and music. I expect you'll hear a good deal of singing today from time to time. Hey, Mummy, I've been learning I want to do Oompa Loompa. Get me one of those Oompa Loompas. I want to take it home with me. Now, now, darling, we mustn't interrupt Mr. Walker. But I want to do Oompa Loompa! Very well. <laughs> Mummy will see if you get an Oompa Loompa before the day is out. I can't get one for you this very second. Oh, Augustus! Augustus, sweetheart! I don't think you'd better do that! Augustus, please! Please, I beg of you not to do that! That chocolate must be untouched by human hands! Augustus, did you hear what the bank said? Come away from that river at once! Oh, why? This officer is so I need a bucket to drink this properly! Mm. Augustus! You must come away. You are dirtying my chocolate. Augustus, you'll be giving that nasty cold of yours to about a million people oh. all over the country. But be careful, Augustus. You'll leave them to me. Start poking around 
outside the chocolate mixing barrel. He's likely to be in there. Oh, and don't leave him in there too long. He's liable to be poured out into the fudge boiler. That really would be a tragedy. My fudge would become quite unedible. What? What? What did you say? I'm joking. Forgive me. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Gloop. We'll see you later. <laughs> well, shall we move on with us? Showing any sign that they are slowing. Ha 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 ha! He's crazy! He's bummed! He's, he's bum. he nutty! He's crazy! He's bad! He's sick! He's dotty! He's sad! He's goofy! He's fuzzy! He's wet! He's loony! Oh no, he's not! Oh, switch on the lights! Bro, faster! Unless it's stolen from the woods in the dead of night. <laughs> Run! Cacao beans, coffee beans, jelly beans, and house beans. House beans? You ought to know. You're one yourself. <laughs> but let's not argue. Press on, press on! Stop the boat! We're there. Where are we? Up there. What's up there? 
Oh, you will see. <laughs> now this is the most important room in the entire factory. All my newest secret inventions are cooking and simmering away in here. Old Fickle Grubber would give his two front teeth just to be allowed inside for three minutes. And so would Prodnews and Slugworth and all those other rotten chocolate makers. But now, you listen to me. I want no messing about when we go in. No touching, no meddling, and no tasting. Is that agreed? Oh, yes, 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 we are going to have Here we are now. Everlasting gobstoppers! Why, they're completely new. I'm inventing them for children who are given very little pocket money. But you can put an everlasting gobstopper in your mouth, and you can suck it, and 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 it will never get any smaller. It's like gum! It is not like gum. Gum is for chewing. And if you tried to chew one of these gobstoppers here, you'd break your teeth off. But they taste terrific. And they change color once a week. Now over here is a machine that makes hair toffee. I haven't quite perfected that recipe yet. But when I do, there'll be no more excuse for little boys and girls to go about with bald heads. But, Mr. Walker, little boys and girls... Don't argue, my dear child. Please, don't argue. Now, if you'll all step this way, I'll show you something I am terrifically proud of. Oh, do stand back. Be careful. Now, here we go. <laughs> you mean that all? That all? But don't you know what it is? Oh, my gum! It's gum! It's a stick of chewing gum! <laughs> right you are. It's a stick of the most amazing, fabulous, and sensational gum <coughs> in the world. Why, this gum is a fantastic gum in that it's a chewing gum meat. It's a whole three-course dinner, all by itself. When I start selling this, it's going to change everything. It'll be the end of cooking, of cleaning, of knives and forks and plates and washing up, and garbage. Why, this particular piece of gum I've just made happens to be tomato soup, roast beef, and blueberry pie. But you can have almost anything you want. What do you mean by that? Well, if you were actually to start chewing it, you would taste all of those things. And it fills you up. It satisfies you. It's terrific. It's utterly impossible. Just so long as it's gone. And I come to it. Then that's for me. Come on, Mr. Wonka. Hand over this magic piece of gum of yours. And we'll see if the thing works. Now, Violet, let's not do anything silly. Oh, what's so silly? I want the gum. I would rather you didn't take it. There's still one or two oh, things. I heck with that. Spit it out. Hey! Keep chewing, kiddo. Keep right on chewing, baby. Today's a great day for the Beauregards. Our little girl is the first person in the world to have a chewing gum meal. No, 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 no. It isn't ready for eating. This isn't right. You mustn't do it. Good heavens, girl. What's happening to your nose? It's turning blue. You can be quiet, Mama, and let me finish. Your chin! Your whole face is turning blue! Mercy save us! The girl's got a blue and purple all over! Violet! You're turning violet! What is happening to you? You're glowing! The whole room is glowing! Well, I told you I haven't quite gotten it right. It always goes wrong when it comes to dessert. It's the blueberry pie that does it. But I'll get that mixture right one day. You wait and see. Violet! You're swelling up! I feel very peculiar! You're swelling up! You're blowing up like a balloon! Like a blueberry!
It's really most annoying. I just cannot understand it. And I don't want a blueberry for a daughter. You put her back this instant. Very well. Tell the Uncle Oompas over there to roll Mrs. Beauregard into the juicing room at once. The juicing room? What for? Uh, to squeeze her. <laughs> we have got to squeeze that juice out of her immediately. After that, we'll just have to see how she turns out. <laughs> but don't worry. We'll get her repaired if it's the last thing we do. <laughs> and I am sorry about all this. I really am. Mr. Wonka, will Mother be all right again? Oh, she'll come out of the de-juicing machine as thin as a whistle. And she'll be purple. Purple from head to toe. <laughs> but there you are. That's what comes from chewing disgusting gum all day long. It looks so disgusting for why you make it in your plastic. I can't hear a word you're saying, my dear boy. We should continue with our tour. Come on now, follow me. Stop here for a moment and rest your feet. Why don't you all take a look through the glass panel of that door? But don't go in. Whatever you do, don't go into the nut room. Or you'll disturb the miniature squirrels. Oh, look, Grandpa, look! Miniature squirrels! Jeepers, there must be a puzzle near, near that pile of walnuts over there. Yes, these squirrels are specially trained for taking the nuts out of walnuts. Why use squirrels? Why not use Uncle Lopez? Well, no one can get walnuts out of walnut shells in one piece. Except squirrels. And I insist on only using whole walnuts in my factory. So I use squirrels for the job. See now how first they test each nut by tapping on it with their knuckles. It's bad. It makes a hollow sound. And they don't bother to open it. They just throw it down the garbage. Hey, Mommy, I've decided I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. Don't be silly, darling. These squirrels all belong to Mr. I don't care about that! I want one! All I'm going to have is two dogs and four cats and six bunny rabbits and sixteen birds and two ponies and a cage of white mice and a silly old hamster! I want a squirrel! All right, darling. Mummy will get you a squirrel just as soon as she possibly can. But I don't want any old squirrel. I want a train squirrel. Very well. Wonka, how much do you want for one of these crazy squirrels? Name your price. They're not for sale. She can't have one. <laughs> Don't be cross. I'm sure she'll 
turn up sooner rather than later. You know, in fact, she might not have even gone down the pipe at all. No, she might still be in the garbage chute, just below the entrance hole. And if that's the case, all you'd have to do is go in and pull her out again. Now, let's see. I don't know. 
You there, Mike TV. Stand back. You're far too close. There are dangerous rays coming out of this thing. Why, they could break you into a million tiny pieces in a second. Now, here we go. Way. It's above our heads now in a million tiny pieces. Quickly, watch the television screen. Well, go on. Take it. Take it? You can't take it. It's a picture on a television screen. It's fantastic. It's, it's a miracle. Just imagine when I start using this across the country. A commercial will play. It'll say, eat. Wonka chocolate! They're delicious! And if you don't believe me, try one for yourself now! Fantastic! But, Mr. Wonka, could you send other things to the same way? Like people? Could you send a real life person from one end to the other in the same way? A person? Are you off your rocker? But, could it be done? Well, good heavens, Charlie! Well, I don't know. I suppose it could. No, I'm pretty sure it could. No, of course it could. I shouldn't like to risk it, though. It could have some nasty results. Look at me. I'm going to be the first person in the world no, to be no, sent no, no. by television. Mike, stop. Come back to me, turn into a million tiny pieces. See you later, alligator. We shall have to pray for the best. We must pray your little boy comes out unharmed at the other end. Come, let's watch the television screen. He may come through at any moment. It's taking a heck of a long time to come across. No way. Anyway, I'll watch the screen. Something's happening. Here he comes. It's just him, all right? He's so small, he can't get any bigger. Well, he's completely okay. He called that okay, he's shrunk. Well, of course he's shrunk. I don't know what you expected. Oh, this is terrible. I can't send him back to school like this. He'll be squashed. He won't be able to do anything. What did he say, Mike? I'll never know. You'll not be able to watch television. The moment I get home, I'm throwing the television set right out the window. I've had enough of television. <laughs> what, Mike? I don't care what you want or how much you jump and scream. Oh, Mr. Walker, will I get the throw again? Hmm. Well, young boys are extremely springy and elastic. So you know, perhaps he'll stretch. If we put him in a special machine, I use for testing the stretchiness of chewing gum. Oh, how far do you think he'll stretch? Maybe miles. <clears throat> but he'll be awful thin. But don't worry, we'll fatten him up with all my super vitamin candy. Contains all the vitamins from A to Z. Oh, Mrs. T. Don't look so worried. Take these instructions to the Oompa Loompas over there. And don't worry, they all come out in the wash. Every one of them! Oh, let's continue. Now, now, we own my which room shall be next. Or more importantly, how many children do we have left? I think there's only Charlie left now, Mr. Wonka. You mean you're the only one? Oh, why, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> but, my dear boy, that means you've won! <laughs> I do congratulate you! I really do! This is terrific, delightful, wonderful! I'm ecstatic! And I hunch you know, right from the beginning, that it'll be you! Oh, there's still so much to do. We mustn't do it, we mustn't do it! I'm, I'm 
I'm so sorry, but I just don't understand any of this. What on earth do you mean? Oh. Do forgive me, Charlotte. I tend to get a bit carried away. I forgot you didn't know. Well, know what? You know something, Charlie? I love my chocolate factory. Tell me, Charlie, do you love my chocolate factory? And please think very carefully about the answer, because it's tremendously important how you feel. Well, Mr. Wonka, all that I can say is that I've never spent a more enjoyable, a, a more enjoyable day in my life, anywhere, in my entire life. Oh, well, I've been very happy. Do I love this chocolate factory? Oh, why, yes, yes, I think I do. Why do you ask, Mr. Wonka? Well, you'll see. I want Charlie and all the other children to receive all the candy I promised them. But I want Charlie to receive so much more! This whole day has been a contest, you see. It's been a contest to find the right person for the job. Well, what job? Well, you see, Charlie, I'm tired. I'm not getting any younger. And it's not as easy to carry out my... My goodness, what's that word? Your idea. Yes, Charlie, thank you. My ideas as it once was. I need some help, and that means you. Oh, well, me? Oh, yes. I would like you, Grandpa Joe, and of course all the rest of your family, to move here and live here permanently. I would like to have someone to take over when I'm gone. You see, I don't have any family, Charlie, but I can think of no one else I would rather have run my factory than you. This will be after I've taught you and trained you in everything I know, of course. But I've watched you all day. And you are the kind of person who will love, appreciate, and care for this factory. As I have all these years. So what do you say, Charlie? Will you accept my offer? If you do, everything I have is yours. Oh, will I? Oh, well, this is more than I could have ever imagined. Oh, yes, of course I will. Mr. Wonka, thank you, thank you so much. Just think of it, Grandpa Joe. When do we get home and tell Mom and Dad and all of the grandpas? It's going to be our chocolate factory, and we're never going to stop again. Just think of all that chocolate. Oh, just you wait.